Rodney Foster, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So you are the CEO and founder of Edel Heiss Wine. Yes, Tell me all about the, this particular wine product and what makes it so unique. Well, I have two products yeah. out, out here. Um, the Edel Heiss red wine is in the white bottle. This is not your typical wine bottle for red wine. We really wanted to do something different, something to stand out amongst the other brands. And the red wine is a fortified red wine. It's made with all natural spices. Cinnamon has brandy in it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Many people enjoy it room temperature, but traditionally it's drank heated up like a mulled wine or hot tea or hot coffee. Really? But you can make sangrias with it. I had pastry chef make poached pears with it, other desserts. So this red wine, you can do so many things with it. It's not your typical red wine. And many people are enjoying it because many people say, well, I don't drink red wine because it's bitter and dry. Mm -hmm. My products are not bitter and dry. It does have some sweetness to okay. it. And it has a lot of flavors in it as well. So it's becoming uh, one of Minnie's favorite red wines. So I'm happy about that because when I decided to create this product, I did not know if people was going to like it or not. But, you know, thank God that mm -hmm. it's becoming one of the favorites that people are enjoying. And then we have the sparkling white wine here, which is very similar to a champagne, so it's great to make mimosas mm -hmm. with it or if you just want to have a glass of champagne. I love and that, so that's like perfect for brunch. Yes, yeah. perfect for brunch. <laughs> that's why I keep saying all these people, they have all these brunch yeah. parties in D.C., and I'm from D.C., Exactly. you need to have this brand out there. Then all my products are organic as well. Okay. Yes. Um, and I know that Switzerland was the trip that started your yes. business venture. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I was, went to St. Moritz, Switzerland in okay. 2011 on vacation. I dragged two friends of mine there. We went to a polo match. It was called a Polo Snow Cup on Ice, which they play polo on a frozen lake. And But, of That's course, the lake is tested yeah. for safety. Um, it's a tradition they do every year. So when I got there, a colleague told me, you know, you have to try this wine that they drink warm. So I was like, oh, cool, cool. I look for the you know, restaurant that sells it or whatever. And I found the location that sold it. I tried it. I thought it was interesting. I never heard of a wine that you drink warm or even tasted one before. Yeah, me either. So the second day I was there when I tasted it, and after that, the whole trip, my mom was like, how can I create my own version of this, but just be a better version? And I met some great people over there that I still stay in contact with which one of the um, guys I met over there is my business partner now, and I told him what I wanted to do, so he was like, let's do it. And he found the vineyard that produces this type of brand, I mean, this type of wine, mm -hmm. and all their products are organic, and here I am today. I love that. So from the time that Idle Heist, you know, was first launched, fast forwarding to today, yes. you're now selling in so many stores, including Costco, yes. which I know is huge. Can you just like talk about what that means to you to have your product in Costco? Well, it means a, a huge lot to me because I have been working trying to get this product in to Costco for two and a half years. Oh, wow. I mean, when I first went to them, I was kind of like green. I didn't understand exactly. the business as I do now, the way they operate. So um, the young lady who's the regional buyer for Costco, um, she's very like stern and she means business. Oh, wow. So when you come to her, it's like you need to have your business straight, you know. So it was some things that I had to do and she was telling me that, well, we don't put brands in unless it's like nationally known. Mm. And you know, I'm coming to her and my brand have not, not even been in five stores yet. Right, right. But that was just how confident I was, and that's what that's I wanted how you to have do. To be. Because yeah. I'm thinking of Costco. So she told me um, the first time that what I need you to do is I need you to lower your prices on your bottles, mm. and I need you to have more exposure. Mm. So I need you, your brand to be in more on premises and off premises locations so that it can be recognized. So when you do get in a Costco, it just won't sit there. Right. Well, that was really nice that she gave you that yeah, advice. She, yeah, yeah, she gave me the advice. But, you know, I was still like, like. Right. 
<laughs> you know, I was still a little taken back because I'm like, dang, she shot me down. Exactly. So I met with her over the course of two and a half years, four times. So the fourth time I met with her, um, she was seeing all the locations that I was popping up in. And she said, okay, well, you know, well, we give you an opportunity. So I was like, okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And she was like, okay, talk to you later. You know, so it wasn't like, you know. So it wasn't like, so what, did she actually give you the opportunity then? She gave me the opportunity. Like no, she gave me, the, she gave me the opportunity. Then I think she gave me the opportunity. And I was like, thank you so much. She was like, okay, talk to you later. Okay. Because she's just very. Used to it. And yeah, she, she doesn't show no emotions or anything. I'm sure she does, you know, at you know, but she's not in front of right. people, you know, that's bringing products to her. But it was a blessing to get that opportunity um, to get my product in the Costco. So then it was just about getting my distributor a vendor of Costco because they was not a vendor of Costco. Mm -hmm. And she said, with well, the application is like a book wow. that we're gonna send to them. And once they got the application, you know, they was like, it's a lot of information they had to fill out and they had to up their insurance because their insurance was only a two million, but then they had to up it to four million Ooh. to be a vendor of Costco. Yeah. So they was not on the account of amends about it because it's like, well, how much is she gonna order? Exactly. Because, you know, we'll be losing money, you know, as well. But like I told my distributor, but it's just not, my product you have the opportunity to put in Costco you have other products you have opportunity to as well but we all worked it out and we finally got it in there and I did my first taste well it's called dry tasting mm -hmm. that Costco do you cannot let people taste the um product and alcohol product in Costco oh really I didn't know that no, I didn't know either <laughs> until I got there you can only talk about it like okay. I'm at other locations you can sample the one, right. but Costco, um, they don't let you do it. And I, I'm kind of, I was thinking that because they have such a high volume of people yeah. that it probably wouldn't be worth it because by the time you keep giving all these people samples, That's you're true. giving out a lot of product because there's so many people there. So then you really have to like sell it and describe you really have how to it sell tastes. It, unless people know about it yeah. already. But you know, I was like, thank God how I'm going to really get through this right. without people trying the product who don't know about it. But, you know, it did well. Yesterday we sold seven cases. Oh, that's really good. Of product there. Now, you know, if, we, if people would have sampled it, they could have, we could have sold right. more. But, you know, it did well for the first time we did a tasting there. So I thank God for that. Right. Yeah. And I know that that process was not easy. You said that it's, it was two years, right? Two and a half right? years. Two and yeah. a half years. So can you speak on the importance of... Um, you know, persistence and dedication? Well, it's a lot of follow-up, a lot of emails, and like you said, persistence, and just doing what they're asking you to do as far as getting brand recognition. You know, I was getting the brand out there, other locations, and making sure that it's being seen and visible, and following up with her and giving her information to all the locations that it's in now and contact name that she can verify that this product is there. So when she finally started seeing me coming back and showing her that, you know, the progress, she was like, okay, well, you know, we'll give you an opportunity. So. That's really great. You know, and like I said, it's just following up, being persistent and being dedicated to it because some people probably like, well, you know what? Yeah. I'm done after the third time. Exactly. But on the fourth try, she gave me the opportunity. And after two years, people could be like, okay, it's not working now, yeah. so why would it happen later? But if I would have did it two years from now, I'd still be like, dang, right. I should have did that two years ago. Right. But I kept with it, and it's in there, and it's doing very well. That's so good. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Um, so we were talking a little bit before we started rolling about how uh, this wine was in the Real Housewives yes. of Atlanta. <laughs> and I'm like a huge Real Housewives of Atlanta fan. So I remember the scene where Kenya was pouring the wine. Yes. She was giving it to Cynthia. Yes. And I was like, oh, I need to try that. So what was it like for you to see your product on Real Housewives of Atlanta? Well, it was very exciting to me because I have so many friends who know the women mm -hmm. on the housewash. I don't know them personally. Okay. And I was trying at that moment to reach out to certain people to, hey, can you talk to this person, this person about getting a product on the show? 
but it never happened. And I just happened to be at dinner one day with friends, you know, the night of the Housewives show. And one of my buddies called me and was like, your product is on Housewives of Atlanta. And I was like. I would have freaked out. Right? I was, and you know, I was like, excuse, I, yeah. you know, I was like, stop lying. Yeah. And they was like, I am sure. Then I started getting calls from other people telling me about it. And one of um, a good friend of mine, when she called me and told me I knew it wasn't, you know, a lie or anything because she would not call me with that. So um, I had my mother um, record it for me because I was not, you know, available to a TV. Mm -hmm. And then they started sending me the clip of it. And it was just exciting because that was something I was trying to make happen. And to this day, in which I'm very happy that it was on there because it was exposure for me. And to this day, I still don't know how I got on there. Yeah. And which I'm not mad about. Exactly. It. But to this day, I still do not you know. You never like tried to contact Kenya and be like. Well, what? actually, I seen Kenya um, last year. She was doing an appearance at one of the um, Sally's hair salon, not hair salon, but the Sally's. Uh, I know what you oh. it's a, I forget what, a supply yeah, store. Yeah, supply store, something like that. and she was, because she has her own hair yeah. care line, and she was doing, it was in College Park, Maryland. So I said, well, let me go up there, introduce myself, and take her another bottle so she can put a face oh, with so the nice. product. See, that's networking. You have so, to do yes, that all So, yes, and time. I did that, and I went up there, and I was like, you know, introduced myself, and I said, well, I have a gift for you. And then when I pulled the bottle, she was like, oh, I have that <laughs> bottle. And that's I said, so you know, well, I'm the CEO and founder of the brand, blah, 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 you know, so... It was just good just meeting her and taking the product. And she's very, a really nice and beautiful mm -hmm. person. So it was just good meeting her, put a face to the brand exactly. and giving her another bottle from me. That is so nice. So, and I didn't even ask her because I didn't want to like, well, how did you get it? Yeah, you know, I didn't but she probably come, just yeah. bought it. Like, she, she said well, she I don't know had how, it too. I don't know how she got it. Yeah. I really don't. And I didn't even ask because yeah. I'm like, thank goodness for that. Yeah. But it was very exciting. I yeah. love that. Um, so you are a black owned business. What does it mean to you, especially now, like to be a black owned business? Well, it means a lot to me because for one, you know, I go to the day parties, I go to the nightclubs and, you know, I'm like, wow, these people are in here you know, they're buying Moet, they buying all these other brands, and I see the double prices exactly. that they charge. And then some, you know, I go in there and spend some time too, then I'm like, now for me, well, I have my own, I can pop my own bottles right. now. I don't have to go pop those bottles. That's like what you know? um, Jay-Z said, where it's like, we're yes. buying, what was it? Yes. He said we need to be buying Ciroc and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. and you know, like, well, he was mentioning at one point of, um, why would I drink Belvedere? Belvedere, when, that's why what Why would was. I drink Belvedere when Puffy has some Exactly. Rock? You know the line I was trying yeah, to remember. Yeah, so, you know, like I tell my friends in that too, you know, it, it, it was a transition because, like, a lot of my friends, they drink Cristal, they mm -hmm. drink Moet, they drink Belle Club, And I'm like, okay, you know, my sparkling wine is very similar to a champagne. Right. So it's like, I don't want to see y'all drinking that stuff no more. Exactly. You know, and it was just a point of, like I have a family member and you know, you know, he's, he's younger and people gonna follow the masses. And he will always be in his Instagram posting Bel Air or Moet, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, to me, you would never meet those people who own those brands, but you can call me and say, hey, can you bring <laughs> that case of wine over and here? And you will be there. And I would be there to get it. So, you know, support me the way you support them. Exactly. It was because it's just educating people. It's not that he didn't want to support me. It's just about education because he's following what he see in the other videos. And I was other gonna people say that here. I think like we're so used to yeah. the brands and they're out there yes. so much where it's like if we have more black yeah. uh, owners who had different wines and liquors and stuff, then it'd be like, okay, yeah, we're buying this. Yeah. So I think it's great um, that more people like you are creating this. And for even us. with the sparkling wine, um, I'm looking to in the future to get that into the rapper's hands because right. it is just like a champagne. You know, I had a Samoye taste it, and mm -hmm. you know, he compared it to Moet, and Moet is Moet. You know, it's the brand behind it, right. the money behind it, the machine behind it, and I'm steadily growing my brand as we speak, but he was like, this tastes better than Moet. Oh, yes. 
So, I mean, that was a compliment for me yeah. as well. And it just further inspired me to get it out there more. So one day that I can build this brand and sell it to, mm -hmm. you know, a Diageo or someone. Right. That would yeah. be amazing. It's going to happen. Yes. Um, so being that you are a black business owner, do you feel that the need to support other black businesses more? Well, I do. And sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. And the reason why sometimes I don't is because I'm big on customer service. Yeah. I am huge on customer service. A customer service can make or break a business. And some people that I go to that are African Americans, they don't have great customer service. And it's kind of sad that, you know, you can't sometimes support your own. And I was just having this conversation um, Friday with two friends of mine, and you know, we was talking about another friend of ours who do, does not have great customer service, and how can we recommend that person right. to other people when you can't show up on time for anything, and you have a business? So what do you think we can do like to fix that as a community? Well, I think as far as, you know, just letting people yeah. know that time is everything, you know, time is money, and great customer service means a lot to everybody because if I'm providing you great customer service or if I have a great product, you're going to recommend my brand to somebody else. Exactly. But if I don't have it, you're not going to recommend it to somebody else. So it's just about talking to people about showing up on time, how to present yourself. You know, I was in Costco doing a, um, the tasting yesterday, and one of the young ladies came up to me and said, you know, she's an entrepreneur too. She was African-American. Mm -hmm. And she, in the business, and I was like, well, what do you do? So she told me, and I couldn't understand this. So I was like, tell me again. So she says she teaches people how to build wealth by buying gold. Mm. And I, I, can, I can understand that, yeah. but for me, when I look at a person and they tell me this is what they do, and I understand we can't all be fixed up and dressed up all the time. But I think that goes into like, we have to work twice as hard. Too, yes. Because it's like people are looking at any little thing to yes. see it as a negative. But or my thing is that if you telling me you helping people build generations of wealth, don't tell me that and you have purple hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about appearance. Yeah. I don't want to go to a Rolls Royce dealer or a Bentley dealer and you look like you sell Toyotas. Mm -hmm. Nothing against Toyotas. Yeah. But it's just the appearance of everything. You got to look the part as well. You see what I'm saying? I think that makes sense. So that's just like a like day-to-day job. If you're working for the federal government agency and you're working at the front desk, you have to present yourself a certain way because you're representing that company. When you people first walk through that door, they see you. Right. So you can't be there with the pink and blue hair. Right. Uh, depending on what you know where you're working at. If you work like federal government, you can't do that. But if you're working for a toy company, you probably could do that. Mm -hmm. you know. I think that has a lot to do with too, like you know, a lot of ba black families and black people, they're not used to starting businesses yes. and things like that, you know. Or not to say that they're not used to it, but they might be the first of, yes. you know, their family and things. So then they might not know how to do certain things. So I think that it has a lot to do with, like, teaching. Education. Exactly. Yes. And just kind of, yeah, we have to help yeah, each other. We do other. have to help each yeah. other. Some people don't want help. Yeah. You know, now, I agree. You know, I think if you're a grown woman or you're a grown man, you should just know these things. Mm -hmm. But if you're teenagers and, you know, you're young adults, you know, people can guide you through that. But some people don't want help. Yeah. Well, you're doing an amazing job. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. What would it. you say your ultimate goal is with Idle High Swine? Well, again. Like, what would make you the most happy? To sell it for a hundred million and above. Yes. <laughs> that would make Let's me happy. Let's make it happen. <laughs> that would make me happy. I mean, because that's the ultimate goal for me is to build a company because I am coming out with other products. So those products will be rolling out soon. So what are the other products that you're going to be coming Well, out I'm getting ready to um, launch a Riesling wine. It's a sweet oh, Riesling. Oh, my mom loves Riesling. I like Riesling too. And I'm coming out with my own alkaline water. Okay. And then I just decided the other day I'm going to do my own vodka as well. Oh, I love that. Yes. So, so it's, it's more than just wine. Yes. Yeah. And like I said, it's just 
expanding the brand. You know, I never thought that this day that I would have two brands on the market, mm -hmm. but you just never know what could happen in a year or two. Exactly, that's why they say you just gotta have to take the first step and yes. then watch where it'll go. Yes. So knowing what you know now about your business, what advice would you have given to yourself when you first started? The advice I would give myself when I first started is that one young lady had told me to, because I kept saying I was going to have my product in by 2014. Okay. So it was getting close to 2014. And she said, well, you know you're getting your product in by 2014. You know, it's getting close to that time, so you have to get the product here. And she said, well, just use FedEx and get the product here. And I'm shipping like 20 cases, you know, mm -hmm. from Germany to the U.S. by FedEx. Wow. When I seen that FedEx bill. I was about to say, that's really expensive, right? I was like, why did I listen to her? Oh, wow. Because it cost me more shipping than I had product at that time. So I would think for me it's most about if someone tell me something, investigate it. Yeah. Look more into it. That makes sense. Than just going with the flow. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Do you have any advice for people who want to start their own business, who are contemplating whether or not they want to do it or not? Well, in the future, I'm going to start like an entrepreneur class mm -hmm. or something around it because many people reach out to me about giving them advice or help them start their business. And for me, it's about if you're going to do something, do it. Exactly. Don't say six months from now you're still trying to do this or you're trying to build this. Just go out there and do it because time waits for no one. And then you'll be looking next two years, I still want to build this, I want to build that. And I say, even if it like, because I think sometimes people are intimidated or it might seem kind of scary yeah. or whatever. I think that like it's always probably going to be scary until you really like just jump into it. Like, I mean, I, it's to. days that I sit back and wonder. Like, I'm, I'm a very confident person. Yeah. But it's days that I sit back and wonder, it's like, this is going to really happen. Exactly. But then I have to think on the other hand that, you know, I have God on my side mm -hmm. helping me. With the, I mean, you know, because I've came a long way with this brand and financing everything myself. I don't have no investors. I don't have no bank loans as of yet. Everything that I'm doing is coming out of my own pocket or money that I'm making from the brand I put back into it. I love it. And that. it's hard, you know, when you really doing a lot on your own and it does get scary sometimes when you doing it really by yourself, you know, and but I just keep pushing and yeah. keep pushing, you know, and somebody's watching and you just never know, you may get that one phone call or that one email that, is so true. that it will change everything. And that's why you just got to keep the faith. Yes, I'm like, yes. yeah, I could go on and on. Cause yes. I'm like, even with this right here, you know, it's like the same thing. You just have to like, keep going no yes. matter what career And you have a beautiful in. setup here. When I came in, I was very impressed Thank of you how so you have much. everything you know, set up. You know, I was not expecting less from when yeah. I got the call yeah. to do this, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, I was like, okay, this is really nice. I like that. I appreciate that. So I appreciate that. you as Thank well. Thank you. As an African-American woman, Trying. you know, young adult <laughs> is doing her thing. And so I appreciate you as well. Of course. Thank you so much. It was truly a pleasure having Thank you on you. here and speaking it. with you. Thank you.